Coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond. And beyond. Broadcasting to the four corners of the globe. So grab your seat, your coffee, or your sundowner. Okay, everybody, here we go. On point, as always. This is Gloves Off. Gloves Off. I'm back at you and gloves off, and today we have a, a pillar in Texas, one of the ones that holds Texas together. That's S- Senator Huffine. And we're going to touch base on why he wants to run for governor of Texas, this great state. Senator, how are we doing today? I'm doing great, Paul. Good to see you. Good to see you and finally meet in this in this yeah. Zoom, in this world that we're in now. But it's a pleasure. Um, how is everything that you see, why, why did you turn around and say, you know what, I'm going to go for the governor now? What's going on? Well, let me just say this, that, you know, I was in the Senate four years from 14 to 18. I'm a business guy and I'm a uh, God-fearing patriot. I'm, I understand and that all of, all of our, uh, the fundamental role, let me just say this, the fundamental role of government is always to defend your God-given liberties. And when I was down in Austin, I realized that to make a difference, it wasn't to be in the legislature. That the governor's office, lieutenant governor's office, and speaker of the house, they're the ones that really run the state. So I lost in 18, and I decided I needed to save Texas. Look, I don't need a job. I'm doing the job because the job's not getting done. I, like most Texas Republicans, were tired of being lied to. We're tired of broken and empty promises. I mean, let's just take some of the main issues, Paul, like, like, is the border secure? Are our property taxes going down? Do we have confidence that our votes are being properly counted? And of course, the answer is no, no, and no. Um, And so I've got great policy plans for all of those issues to secure the border to phase out property taxes, and to have a new law enforcement to be in charge of our our elections. And my opponent, as you probably know, is 31 years in elected office, 31 years. And he's the definition of a career politician, and he's a political windsock. He just blows in the wind, is going to do whatever he needs to do. And you know what a a career politician is always concerned about, right? (laughs) Their career. They're not concerned about what affects Texas or the Republican Party. Uh, they're always concerned about their career. Absolutely. And I'm glad you said that about, uh, about the border security. I live in Laredo, which is a border. We've seen this go on for many, many years. And it's just been, it's been a can that's been kicked down the street from one to the other, and it's never been addressed. And now we have the problem that we have. And it's, it, it's not going to get any better. I think it's going to go worse, and it's not going to get any better. Um, you know, they talk about. I was, I was looking. For, um, I have a business. I've been, I've, I've, had, I've owned my own business since the age of eighteen. And um, what happens is, I was looking for a new spot, a real estate, and they showed me this building, excellent building. And I said, "What used to be here?" They said, "It used to be a ICE detention center in the middle of a neighborhood." I go, "Really?" So I went inside rooms and so on and so forth. Those mm-hmm. offices they had the whole nine yards. And I said, here we have people looking for spaces where we can put our children safely. Those ch- those the kids that are coming across illegally safely. I go, they have a space right here. Why don't they start using it? We rent it again. Start using common sense because this problem is not going to end in four, four months. It's not going to end at the end of the year. It's, it's going to be something that we're probably going to see for the next 10 years until the immig- immigration laws change federally. And we here in Texas say no longer, then that's when we're going to be changed. But that's one of the main concerns. Of course, election is another one. Coming from Webb County, we, we've seen the election process. And it was an eye opener now that it happened across the United States and everybody's saying, oh, it happened. It's always happened here. I don't know if it ever happened there. I guess not openly. But one thing that concerns 
many that I, I deal with is parental alienation, 50-50 co-parenting, and the enforcement of a penal code that's never been enforced, which is Penal Code 2503. How do you feel about those issues, Senator? Well, I feel like that, of course, the family, the traditional family is the foundation uh, for everything. It's the foundation for education, our, 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 our uh, business, you know, our, our education, our health care, our religious affiliations. And whatever the government, the, really the government just needs to get out of the way and we need to get the families more involved. Absolutely. Um, would you press for 50-50 yes. co-parenting if you were a governor? Yes. It takes two to create a child and it takes two to raise them. That's beautiful to hear. Now, changing, changing this, um, you know, we, everybody got hit last, last year with, with uh, the pandemic. And small businesses took, took, a, took a hard knock. In fact, a lot of small businesses here in Laredo aren't going to come back again. They're not coming back. If something like that would occur while you were a governor, would you do those crazy mandates? No, I wouldn't. I would never have shredded the Constitution and thus were an allegiance to uphold and defend. And you know, Abbott, in one day, you might know this, Paul, in one day, he destroyed three million jobs. He put three million Texans on unemployment. He destroyed tens of thousands of businesses. And unilaterally, just on his own, he decided who were winners, who were losers, who donated to his campaign, who didn't, who hired the lobbyists, who didn't. Now, it's very important to understand that however the state responded to the virus was with on Greg Abbott. He gave the county's permission, the mayor's permission to do whatever they did. And... You know that three million jobs is more jobs than Texas has created in the last 10 years combined? And, and if that wasn't bad enough, he closed our churches. He closed our churches over the holiest week of the year, Easter. I mean, you, you couldn't properly bury the dead. You couldn't, you couldn't get married. You couldn't, uh, baptize, couldn't get baptized or baptize your children. And it just goes on and on. I mean, it was a disaster. I never would have done any of that. Absolutely. And that's good to hear because a lot of people are, are still in fear about that. And they fear a lot of the rhetoric that's coming out of D.C. about door to door checking on vaccines and so on and so forth. Now, if you be sit, if you would be in that seat, what's going to happen on that end? If it, all of a sudden they say they start sending federal agents door to door. Well, I'm going to use all the state, state resources possible to make sure that doesn't happen. I, I'm personally, I'm not taking the vaccine. If someone wants to do it, that's their choice. Uh, but it's a medical a decision that they're going to make privately in their own. And it's certainly something the government should never force and something the, gov the state of Texas should step in and say, we're never going to let anyone for any reason enforce a vaccine. Absolutely. I'm in full agreement with you and in, in, in that with the vaccine. What else would you like to tell Texans that you'll change, that you'd like to modify to make us better? Well, of course, the border. I've got a great border plan. I came, you know, I've been in the campaign about eight weeks now. And, and when I came out, I wanted to uh, announce I was going to finish Trump's wall or do a Texas wall. And we're going to do it through for hundreds of miles. And then uh, the governor came out about a month later and said he was going to do a Texas wall and he's going to build it for about a mile or 10 miles. Well, I'm going to build it for hundreds of miles. And I know it's going to cost a, a lot, but that's okay because I'm a business guy and I see a good deal. And we spend billions of dollars a year, and Texas taxpayers do, on educating illegals and health care, incarceration and everything else. So this is about a, a one-year payback. We can get our money back in one year if we build that wall and we can stop this invasion that's coming in. I mean, we really are being invaded. As you know, the cartels control all the people crossing the river and they're all paying a fee. They're making tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars every month uh, with human trafficking. And of course, everything else is going on with the cartels. They're the most dangerous criminal gangs and organizations in the world. And they essentially control the Mexican side of the border and some of the Texas side. 
So I'm going to enact Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution that was written specifically for a, a situation just like this, because uh, we're being invaded. So I'm going to mobilize all the Texas military resources, 100% of them, and we're going to occupy the river. There's 25 bridges over the river, and I'm going to stop all inbound commercial traffic from Mexico to Mexico acquiesces and secures their side of the river. And we're going to get control of this situation once and for all. You know, if Abbott wanted to secure the border, he could have done it six years ago, four years ago, two years ago, six months ago. His plan never has worked and never will work. And I'll also point this out, Paul, real quick, is that the only hope we have of securing the Texas border is with the governor of Mexico. Um, excuse me, the, gov the governor of Texas, not Mexico. They could help too, but it's the governor of Texas. Uh, the federal government's never going to secure our border. It's only with the, a courageous governor of Texas, and I'm never going to ask permission from the federal government to secure Texas's border. I want to make that real clear to you and your listeners. I will never ask permission to secure our border. Absolutely. You know, and a lot of, you know, I know I have friends that have branches on the border and I have people down here in Laredo, they're, they're, they're divided. And I understand why, and I see the rationale that it's humanitarian and so on and so forth. But also sec, uh, human trafficking is not humanitarian. How are we going to take deal with that? So when a lot of folks have property on the border, would you all use uh, eminent domain? How, I, that's what I've never seen. How come eminent domain has not been used in producing a straight wall? Because that wall's been around since since George Bush, and uh, in fact, he tried. And I remember a lot of a lot of uh, big rig companies would not do roads and ranches because they were actually doing clearing the side of the ro the river back then. Mm -hmm. And it's never been done. It was always something that was just let's throw a c couple of contracts out to a couple of friends that have big rig companies, and nothing was ever really really done. So how would you do that? Well, we would, we would use eminent domain if it's necessary. Hopefully, we wouldn't have to use it. But if it's necessary, we'll do whatever we need to do. I mean, that's a long, longer-term solution, obviously, building the wall. But we'll get that done. Uh, the me most immediate thing to do is, is get the military engaged. And then we'll also enforce immigration uh, laws that we want with the military. I mean, I'll be removing illegals keeping them from crossing and, and, and loading them on buses and taking them right back across the river. Absolutely. Absolutely. What else, what, what else do you have towards our businesses here that, in Texas that you can say, this is what I have to change. This is where we have to go. This is my, my plan for not in four years, in 20 years to sustain the continual growth of well, businesses. Well, thank you for asking that question. I think right now that Texans are really tired of renting their property, their real estate, from the government. And I say that you, you, a lot of people don't understand this. If you look out, uh, look out the window as you drive, every ranch, every farm, every lot, every building, every piece of real property, your home, it's all owned by the government. All we do is rent it from them. They have a first lien, and they've got a tax lien, and that's the rent we pay. And we don't have any control over the rent. We can never pay off the rent. And it just keeps going up and up. And Texans are real tired of renting their homes from the government. And you know, in a homestead exemption, you get a 10% cap of what it can go up. And everybody's going to hit that this year and next year. But on business properties, there's no cap. And 50% of the tax is paid by businesses and 50% by homeowners, approximately. And so this is going to create tremendous wealth to get Texas off their reliance on the property tax. And it's not overnight, Paul. This is going to take about 10 years. I've got a great plan, tons of spreadsheets, three feet thick, and we've got a good plan to make it work. And it'll take about 10 years to gradually phase out the property tax. And the best way to do that is to take the growth in state revenue, cap state spending, and use that growth in revenue above the cap on state spending to buy down property tax. So if we cap state spending at 2%, Growth in revenues generally grow at eight. We can take that 6% and buy down property tax with it, and it really adds up quickly. Also, we'll be shifting some of that to a consumption tax or sales tax. But the good news is for everybody is they'll have a chance to vote on it because it's going to be a constitutional amendment. 
And then, because I want, when I cut the head off that snake, I want it to stay dead. So everybody gets a chance to vote on it. And we're never going to have an income tax. It will create tremendous wealth. We think it might create a hundred billion dollars of wealth overnight. And I just ask everybody to really kind of close your eyes for a moment and, uh, and imagine, visualize what it would be like not to ever have to pay that tax again. And, and what you could do with the money. Go to a private school. You could donate it to charity. You could hire more people in your business. You could create more R&D, research and development. The inventions that we could have in, our, in Texas, the, the <clears throat> excuse me, you can expand your business. Expand, and, and in your home, about a third of your mortgage in Texas is property taxes. You could buy a bigger home. You could qualify for a different home. You could qualify for your first home. Rents could go down in rental properties because one of the, the biggest expense for most rental properties is property tax. So this is going to create tremendous amount of wealth and prosperity for the state of Texas. Absolutely. And, um, you know, those are plans that are, and those are issues, and that's a great plan, that, and that, that are never mentioned. You know, and uh, it has to be done. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, we can't kick the cannon anymore down the street. You're right, Paul. I, I tell you, we've been promised so many broken and empty promises. And I'm the actual Republican that's going to actually do something. And on property tax, let me just start out again and say that the first thing, if we want to phase out property tax, we got to have. There's one thing you have to have. And you have to have a governor that champions it. Without that, nothing's going to happen. It all start, leadership is everything, and everything starts at the top. Absolutely. And I want to thank you for standing up, you, and you're standing up again for to save Texas in this time. And uh, more power to you. I wish you the best. I want to thank you for the time that you spend with us. It's an honor. And um, hopefully we can move forward, and we'll, hopefully we can see brighter roads ahead in Texas. Well, thank you, Paul. And I look forward to coming into to Laredo to visit with great patriots down there. And uh, it's going to be exciting. We're going to win this race. We're on a path to victory. We, it's all sorted out, and we're going to win. And we're going to give uh, that career politician a retirement party. Absolutely. And anytime we're here, so we'll, we'll wait for you here, and hopefully we can do it in August. Let's get it going before school starts. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you, Paul, and God bless Texas. Be safe, and God bless Texas.